Hey guys, Swifty here doing my full scouting report on San Diego State guard and Bears draft pick Zachary Thomas. He is an athletic and nasty blocker that I just loved watching on tape. As always, these videos take a ton of work, so please hit that like button for me so I can keep bringing you amazing Bears content. This is my sixth full scouting report from this year's draft class. I still have four to go, plus the punter video. Thomas was the 186th overall pick of the 2022 NFL Draft. He played mostly tackle for San Diego State, but he projects better as a guard in the NFL with the versatility to play tackle in a pinch. He's 23 years old, 6 foot 5, and 308 pounds. He has 33 and 6 8 inch arms and ran a 496 40 yard dash. He is the brother of Arizona Cardinals third round pick Cameron Thomas, the defensive end. They both attended San Diego State and trained together for the NFL draft. Cool story there. He has 31 career starts, 12 coming at left tackle, 17 at right tackle, and 2 at right guard. He was second team All Mountain West at right tackle in 2020, and then first team All Mountain West at left tackle in 2021. He had 310 snaps at left tackle last year, and only allowed three sacks and six total pressures. Now let's get into his strengths and weaknesses. First, let's talk a little bit about Zachary Thomas's strengths. He plays the game with great leverage and keeps his pad level low. He keeps his feet constantly moving in the run game. Like most Poles draft picks, Thomas has excellent athleticism, scoring 898 on the RAS score. He fires off the line of scrimmage and is very quick out of his stance. He plays with nastiness and sometimes just looks like a mean player that I wouldn't want to run into. He has quick, active feet and the ability to mirror pass rushers. He also keeps his feet going until the whistle. He's great at maintaining blocks in the run game, shows natural power, anchor, and leverage. He wins in space and has great balance and is rarely on the ground. Important note here, most of the tape I watched on Thomas was at left tackle, but I am projecting him as a guard in the NFL. Most of his issues in pass protection can be hidden or covered up when moved inside to guard. I love his potential at guard. He reminds me a ton of Cody Whitehair coming out of college. His athleticism and nastiness should shine at the guard position. He could benefit from some added strength, but he uses his burst and power to generate plenty of push in the run game. He has the potential to be a dominant blocker. So what about his weaknesses? He is a much better run blocker than he is a pass blocker. He can lose reps when exposed on an island. He occasionally will lunge and get his punches swatted too often. He had some technique issues in pass protection at left tackle. Sometimes look like a different player when on an island in pass protection versus the player I saw who dominated in the run game. His technique wasn't as good in pass sets. He played on his toes a bit and would lose anchor strength and reach on occasion. Looked like he added strength last year and bulked up, but he could always use a bit more strength at the next level. Most of the weaknesses I saw on tape can be easily minimized by moving him inside to guard in the NFL. Now let's talk a little bit about his long-term potential. I see a ton of Cody Whitehair in Thomas's game. He looks like a future starting guard for sure. I think he's even a guy who has the skills to stick around at tackle, but he has a much higher ceiling inside a guard. I have to be honest, even after telling you guys all offseason how deep this draft class was over and over and over, I'm still kind of shocked at how much potential these late round picks have. Zachary Thomas has the potential to be a dominating run blocker at the NFL level. He should be a good run blocker day one. As for pass blocking, I believe most of his weaknesses can be covered up. I also think he has the smarts and athleticism to do well as a pass blocker. So how about his expectations for this season? He fits the outside zone scheme perfectly. His leg drive and ability to steer defenders makes him an ideal fit. 
I think he might be the favorite for the right guard spot at this time. I definitely like him more than I do Dakota Dozier. I think his biggest competition might be the guy I'm breaking down next, Tyree Carter. I purposely wanted to break them down back to back. I have watched a ton of each player on film. I am not all the way done with Carter's breakdown yet, but at this point I would give a slight edge to Zachary Thomas. We will see how close Carter grades out when I finish him up this week, but I do see a position battle coming at right guard, and I have thought about it for a while now, but now we'll officially say it at this time. I expect Zachary Thomas and Jatiri Carter to be battling for that right guard spot. If Larry Borum loses the left tackle job early, he could be an option to slide inside as well, but for now that is a long shot. I think they want to see if Borum can play left tackle. So my expectations are pretty high for Zachary Thomas. I think he could be a long-term starter and should also be in competition to start at right guard day one this year. So let's get into his grades. For Zachary Thomas's overall grades, starting with his measurables, he has good size, a nice frame with long arms and a nice wingspan. I give him a 7.9. Athleticism. He is very athletic with great foot speed and good burst. He ran a 49640 and is comfortable in space and on the move. I give him an 8.7 on athleticism. Next up is run blocking. Thomas was a dominant run blocker. They played in a run-heavy offense and leaned on him to generate push in the run game. He constantly keeps his feet moving, plays with low pad level, and generates push. He's able to maintain his block and uses his leverage to wall defenders off. As a run blocker, I give Thomas a 9.2. Pass blocking. Thomas was an adequate pass blocker in college. He only gave up three sacks at left tackle in 2021. However, his technique as a pass blocker needs a lot of work. I think he has the IQ and athleticism to eventually be a good pass blocker. I believe that most of his weaknesses will be covered up by moving him inside to guard, but he still needs to work on his technique. As a pass blocker right now, I give him a 6.9. For his technique, his run blocking technique is beautiful but his pass blocking technique needs a ton of work. So it's tough to grade here, but I will give him a 7.3. Overall, Zachary Thomas is a good football player. He's a really good run blocker and a decent pass blocker. He projects even better at right guard. He has the nastiness and athleticism that Poles looks for as well. I give him a 7.9 overall. For my final thoughts, I want to again emphasize that I'm not just trying to be a homer and find positives in these rookies. I broke down more than a full season worth of film on Thomas, and the bottom line is that he is a good football player and normally would not have been available in the sixth round. He looks like a guy who should be a starter in the NFL and another solid pick for Ryan Poles. I will be talking about the overall class with condensed breakdowns and scores for every player after I finish these up. So far, we are 6 for 6 on guys who have starting potential. I think Kramer is more of a long-term starter and will be a huge long shot to overtake Lucas Patrick this year. Tyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker are easy day one starters. I think Valus Jones Jr. is a day one slot starter. I think Zachary Thomas has a really good shot to win the right guard spot. And if he doesn't, it'll probably be the other rookie, Jatiri Carter. So that's four starters from this class. And then you have Braxton Jones, who has a shot to be number five. Trenton Gill, the punter, would be number six. And then I haven't gotten my Dominique Robinson, Elijah Hicks, or Tristan Ebner breakdowns done yet. I think Robinson and Hicks both have long-term starting potential, but will probably not make an impact this season. I think we got at least five starters out of this draft five starters we came in with only six picks and left with 11. i think at least eight of these guys have long-term starting potential if not more i won't go too deep into it here but i am so impressed with this draft class i can't wait to see these guys on the field soon in addition to my boy jordan t silvera i brought in my boy lucas barry to talk about zachary thomas Lucas has an awesome thread on Twitter about Thomas, so I reached out to see if he wanted to chat. 
As always, these breakdown videos take a ton of work. So please hit that like button for me so more fans can see it. Next up is Jatiri Carter. I still have Dominique Robinson, Elijah Hicks, Preston Ebner, and the much anticipated punter video still to come. I've put in a ton of work on future breakdowns for Justin Fields, Cole Komet, and much, much more. Stay tuned for my bonus interviews and extra content. And until next time, bear down. Um, um, ah. <laughs> Cut. But, um, um, no. <laughs> What up guys, Swifty here with your boy Lucas. We're talking some Bears football. Of course, we're talking today about Zachary Thomas. You guys will be seeing this after I finish my scouting report, but we're recording this before, so I'm not quite where I wanna be on Zachary Thomas, but I do have a good uh, bit of knowledge on him. Um, so we're gonna start off. Lucas, go ahead and introduce yourself, shout out your Twitter, and then um, just kind of give me your first impression on Zachary Thomas. Yeah, my name's Lucas. Uh, I'm a you know a member of Bears Twitter here. You can follow me on Twitter at lberry underscore forty. Yeah, just shoot me a follow on there. I try and pump out as much Bears content as I can. Uh, my latest thread was a a Braxton Jones or a Zachary Thomas kind of side by side because they both played a common opponent. So that was pretty interesting what I found there. And uh, overall, you know, I'm just pretty excited about this draft class, some of these prospects. You know, today we're talking about Zachary Thomas, and I think he's he's one of my favorite linemen in this class. How are you feeling about him you've seen so far? So far, what I've got from him so far, he looks like he could be dominant in the run game. He has a lot Definitely. of strength and gets a push in the run game. He is athletic. That's one of the things Poles loves. He loves those guys with uh, fluid athleticism, and he can... He has the lateral movement skills where he can mirror, mirror and stay with defensive ends. His problem, so far what I've seen with him is he plays with his pad level a little bit too high and then mm -hmm. occasionally looks like he's a little slow getting off the jump. Where when I was studying Braxton Jones and Jordan pointed this out when I talked to him, as soon as the ball is snapped, if you watch it in slow motion, Braxton Jones was out of his stance before anyone else on the line. And sometimes with Zachary Thomas, I see him as one of the last guys on the line. That's the only negative I've really seen from him other than him playing with his pad level a bit too high so far. But yeah, he looks like he's going to be a really good player. And I'm like, he actually reminds me a bit of Cody Whitehair when I graded him coming out. And it's like, we got this guy that late, sixth round? Like, okay, okay. Well, I'm pumped. I'm pumped by it. What, what do you think about him? Yeah, no, you definitely, you know, that was definitely one of the things I, I noticed as well was kind of his jump off the ball is definitely a little bit slower than the uh, the rest of the linemen. But um, something that immediately jumps out to me about Zach Thomas is his uh, kind of versatility. You know, he played, he came into San Diego State and he played right guard for them in 2018. Um, and then I think 19 and 20, he played some right tackle before shifting to left tackle his last year. He's a pretty big dude. I mean, he's got really good size for the NFL, but I think kind of his downfalls in, in pass blocking and, and his pass sets will will definitely kick him inside. So he probably projects better um, as a guard in the NFL. And obviously the Bears have a massive need, but pretty sure he was a four-year starter there. He did have some injuries, which, you know, Ryan Poles kind of seemed like he was targeting some guys who might have had a little bit of injury history and looking for a nice rebound. You know, maybe that's why he fell a little bit further. Overall, I think there's some really good tape on this guy for him being was he was he taken in the fifth round or sixth round? Sixth round, sixth round. Sixth round, yeah. So for being taken in the sixth round, I think there's some really good tape on him. I mean, his last year there, 2021, he was he graded out as one of the best run blockers in, in college football. And you can see that kind of immediately. I think with the Bears new run scheme, San Diego State, you know, they were basically a run first team. They ran all the time the transition to the bears offense will kind of be seamless for this guy in, in their new outside zone scheme. Um, you know, I think he moves pretty well in space and, and he's always, he's always moving guys a ton and, and working to the second level, which is just fantastic. And obviously if you put him at guard and he's competing for a spot, he'll have, you know, a veteran center and a veteran tackle next to him to kind of help him out there. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. And I think one of the things I saw from him that I think will help his transition to guard because I, I think he's going to be a guard too. But he's really good in space. Um, when mm -hmm. I, when I saw him get to, when he gets to the second level of, of the tape that I've seen him so far, he's natural in space. And some of the guys that I 
I've graded out earlier this year. Like I watched a lot of tape on Dakota Dozier and you know Julian <laughs> Davenport and the guys we signed. And the biggest problem I saw with a lot of the guys we signed like that, and a little bit with Braxton Jones too, was in space they they kind of lose their mobility a little bit. Zach Thomas just looked when he's in the open field with a linebacker, like he's going to get his hands on that linebacker. He's not one of those guys where he's just going to whiff and they're going to go away like James Daniels would do all the time. Like he may <laughs> not pancake them all the time, but he's going to get a piece of them. Like he knows how he's going to get in the way at least. Like at the very least, he's going to get in the way and put a hand on you. And I like that about him. So talking about right guard, do you think he has a chance? Because I, I see him right now as one of the favorites for the right guard spot. Um, do you think he has a chance to come in and win that spot this year? Yeah, you know, I think he absolutely does. And and maybe it speaks more to what the Bears have done or, or haven't done in the offseason. Like they really haven't addressed the position um, besides losing James Daniels and bringing in Dakota Dozier. So it's like that position's kind of up for the taking. And if if there was one year where you were going to say, all right, we need to maybe plug in a rookie who may not be ready, but the experience could be helpful. I mean, it would be this year. Obviously, you know, you don't want to get fields killed, but you're trying, you're hoping that you can develop him enough that he'll be, you know, game ready by week one and uh, playing at right guard. Like I just said, you know, he'll have some help and the bears will have to get creative and, and how they give that help across their line. But, you know, with, with Matt Nagy, obviously, you know, we, we saw a lot of five man protections where it's just like you have rookie Tevin Jenkins out there on an Island verse, you know, Miles Garrett and you're not giving him any help. So obviously some of the scheme can help you overcome, you know, some of the rookie pitfalls, if you will. I definitely think he has a chance to to play at right guard. Like I said, I think the transition to this run scheme will be seamless and, you know, his ability in the run game will carry right over to the NFL. It's more so just his pass protection that I'm more concerned about it. It's not as polished. You know, obviously that's why he was a six round pick and Ryan Poles obviously saw a lot of potential in him um, for taking him. Yeah, honestly, when I when I look at his tape, what I've seen so far is like in a normal year, this is a guy that I, I see with like a third or fourth round grade. Obviously, this year was really deep, and a lot of the smaller school guys kind of get lost in the shuffle. That's one thing I try to point out to fans when they say, oh, man, all we got on our offensive line are you're so hyped over these day three guys. And I'm like, look, man, I know they're day three guys, but most of the time these guys are going to be third or fourth round picks in your average draft. And we haven't had – this, these many, like, if you count guys we got late, if you count Braxton Jones, Tyree Carter, Zachary Thomas, and Doug Kramer, four guys, I don't think in my lifetime we've ever drafted four guys on the offensive line in the same draft with this much talent as those guys. So, to me, it's exciting, and I, I see it too. I think Zachary Thomas should transition pretty well. Most of his weaknesses that I've seen, the other things that kind of look like they could be weaknesses – or things that I'm trying not to ding him for too much because it's because he's exposed on an island out there one-on-one, -on -one, you know? He mm -hmm. played left tackle. I see him purely as a guard for us, and I think he's a guy who's going to be a good guard in the NFL. Do you see those same traits? Yeah, definitely. You know, when I was watching him at left tackle, you know, like I said, his biggest downfall is probably in, in pass pro, and and what would happen is basically he would just get overpowered by, you know, stronger pass rushers, which – Generally, inside, in pass protection, you're normally going to have help. And um, you're not going to be on that island. So, like I said, there's going to be ways around scheming him to to have help and, and not be all by himself out there. But, you know, and also the other thing about these small school guys, too, is, like, their coaching going from, you know, whether it's a small, you know, FCS or a small FBS school, the coaching from there to the NFL is going to be uh, – you know, a huge, massive difference for them as well. They're going to get more coaching in one training camp than they have in their whole career, their whole whatever college they were Yeah, exactly. So it's just like small things will get corrected a lot quicker. And and the uh, the kind of pattern between all these linemen is that they're they're phenomenal athletes. So they all fit well within the offense. And and you know, with with athletes, I think they're they're more coachable and easy, you know more adaptable to to what you're looking for. So. I definitely think he he's got a shot to to play right guard for the Bears maybe immediately. You know that would that would definitely be exciting for us. No, yeah, that's awesome, man. And he's a kid I'm rooting for. And the more I think about this draft class and whole, like I keep going deeper. I still have some guys to break down, but so far it's like, man, every guy I broke down has a chance to be a starter. 
And then when you're looking at the guys I haven't broke down yet, like Doug Kramer, I, I don't think he's going to be a starter this year specifically because we have Lucas Patrick. But Zach Thomas and Zatiri Carter, they're, they're going to fight for a starting job. I think one of those guys has a good chance of being a starter. And then you look down even at the, in the back of the seventh round, our punter, he's going to come in and start day <laughs> one. Nobody's given that credit. That's a seventh round starter. And then Elijah Hicks, actually, I think... I can't wait to break his tape down because I'm really excited about him. But from what I've seen so far, my initial impression is like, hey, he can be a starter for us in the future. I'm just really pumped about the draft class, man. Great talking with you. Do you have uh, any other final thoughts or any uh, anything else you want to get out there to the fans? Maybe just, again, positional versatility for Zach Thomas. You know, even if we're not talking about a starter, if you're just talking about a guy who could dress on game days, even if we just limited it to that, maybe he doesn't start week one. You know, the fact that he played right tackle, left tackle, right guard, that's so valuable to a team, you know, especially if you compare him to Doug Kramer, who only plays center. Maybe that's something that keeps Kramer on the practice squad longer because uh, you would probably want your backup center to be playing guard. So the fact that Thomas can maybe provide you as a backup swing tackle as well, I definitely think he's probably got the best shot to be dressing for the the bears on on game day first of all but yeah no i'm totally excited to to see the rest of your breakdowns the ones before this have been awesome and uh yeah elijah hicks is a guy i'm, I'm really excited for as well yeah that one's gonna be crazy man he gets me pumped up <laughs> i've watched that video where he drops down and does the push-ups he's like i'm really like that like i'm, I'm turned just know i'm coming with that energy i'm really like that I'm, <laughs> uh, he gets me hyped man but uh, it was awesome talking to you lucas man it was a pleasure yeah thanks for having me on i really appreciate it well, appreciate it, man. Um, um, but um, um, the um, you, um, 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 but um, and um, um, with um, 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 but um, um, it's um, but um, 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 and um, uh, um, 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 um. Um, in a Bears uniform or just a guy that you really like coming out of this draft? Man, I like that. It's Sky Moore from Western Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do the show with you. No, I'm just playing. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Time out. I, need I don't know much about David Moore. I don't even have David Moore on my page, but oh. – uh, Who's David Moore? All right, let's stop. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I did a full breakdown on him. <laughs> Cut. <laughs>